Episode 198 of the Outdoor Biz Podcast with Brian Cheney from Corkers. Change your footwear traction on the fly. Brought to you by Revenue River. Revenue River is a Colorado-based digital technology and marketing agency helping companies in the outdoor industry execute their e-commerce and online efforts. As certified Big Commerce and Shopify partners and a Diamond HubSpot partner, they are well-equipped with the technical experience and expertise to solve any business problem. Whether you need help with website design, system integrations, online store management, or growth marketing, they will help you achieve your goals. Revenue River clientele also includes Sterling Rope, Deuter USA, Alps Outdoors, and the Outdoor Biz Podcast. When you're ready to compete and win online, contact the Revenue River team at revenueriver.co slash outdoorbiz. I believe achieving success in the outdoor biz is dependent upon embracing the outdoor lifestyle and learning from outdoor leaders that came before you. If you agree, then listen up for tips, advice, and hacks about growing or starting your career in the outdoor biz. My name is Rick Says. Welcome to the Outdoor Biz Podcast. In this episode, Brian Cheney from Corkers talks about his college days at St. Mary's, his semester at sea. But first, if you're thinking about starting a podcast, visit ricksays.com slash podcast cheat sheet and get my 10-step guide to producing your first podcast. Go to ricksays.com slash podcast cheat sheet and begin producing your podcast today. That's ricksays.com slash podcast cheat sheet. Hey, Brian, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, Rick. Yeah, good to catch up with you. So you survived the IFTD fly show. I think that was just last week, wasn't it? Man, it seems like it was two weeks ago already. Yeah, time is flying. But uh, yeah, we had a great show. It was good to catch up with uh, a lot of key retailers and some media folks. And we had a good show. So we enjoyed it. Very cool. Very cool. So you were introduced to fly fishing and the outdoor lifestyle at an early age, right? Yeah, yeah. I was lucky enough to uh, have parents that enjoyed the outdoors. And my dad especially is a big hunter fisherman uh so i was exposed to the outdoors very early uh, my mom was a pretty big skier in high school and um so i started to learn skiing when i was three i think i was uh <laughs> one of the one of the younger ones out on the hill at that point in time so uh yeah i was been exposed to a lot of stuff uh early at an early age and was lucky enough to have parents that would take me out fishing hunting and skiing and camping and all sorts of good stuff that's awesome did you guys travel around or did you mostly just where you, where you grew where'd you grow up well, I grew up in Portland, Oregon, but okay. my dad is, my dad's originally from, uh, Idaho. So mm -hmm. he, and he's got kind of a love of fly fishing and he, he loves Idaho as well. So I was lucky enough just as a young kid to go with him and we would do road trips in the summer where we'd go through nice. Idaho and Montana and do a lot of fishing on smaller streams. And that's kind of what he liked to do. And, uh, and that's kind of what I like to do now too. So, yeah, perfect. uh, yeah, I got to see a lot of good country. That's great. Yeah. And your family bought corkers. How old were you when that happened? So, I, yeah, so this kind of the way this worked out was um, I went to work for Corkers back in 2003, and the oh, company okay. had just just been purchased uh, by a gentleman who was kind of nearing retirement and looking for something kind of fun to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was back in 2003, and I ended up working there about four years, and we bought the company in 2007. Oh, so you were older then. You weren't, uh, I thought yeah. when you were a little kid, got you. No, no. It's uh, what's cool about it, though, for me being from the Northwest and you know, a native of Portland, Oregon. Um, it's an Oregon-based company that actually has roots that go all the way back to 1959. So oh. at IFTD uh, here, that show we were celebrating 60 years in business because uh, Corkers got started in September of 1959. So um, cool. as far as we can trace it back. So yeah, it's kind of kind of fun. Yeah. So when you were to work there, what was your role? What what was your first job there? So when I, when I, uh, interviewed, I was actually living in the Bay area at the time and I, I wanted, I was looking to move back to Portland and, uh, I interviewed for the job to do all the sales and marketing. And at the time the company was just making overshoe cleats. So mm. basically cleats that you'd strap on over the top of your shoes or boots. Mm -hmm. Uh, and a, a big part of their market was fishing. So they, um, sell it to people that were steelhead fishing or jetty fishing. Mm. Um, but they wanted someone to go to the, all the shows, do all the travel and, manage reps and do all that stuff. So that was my first job um, with Corkers and really in the f first job in the outdoor industry. It was. What were you doing before that? Uh, I worked in the Bay Area for Xerox. So okay. um, I did sales. Uh, so sales and marketing is kind of my background. And um, that's probably what I still feel most comfortable with. But <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I worked for Xerox doing sales around the Bay Area. Um, and it was a great learning experience. But at, at the same time, it's a very big company. And I was kind of looking to get involved with a smaller company. And uh, I found that in Corkers. <laughs> yeah, good for you. No, that's great. You had that right in your backyard. Um, yeah. And you went to college at St. Mary's, right? That's in the barrier. How'd you decide to go there? 
Uh, yeah, I did. So it's uh, East Bay, um, close yeah. to where, where Cal is, right, right across the hill from Berkeley. But um, right through the my, tunnel, right? My, exactly. Yeah, Caldecott yeah. Tunnel. Yeah. My uh, my older sister actually um, uh, went to St. Mary's, and that's how I learned oh, about it. And I went it. down there a couple times and visited, and and liked it. And it's kind of funny because my brother, my little brother, and my older sister, we all went to different high schools, but we ended up all going to St. Mary's college. <laughs> really? Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. It's a beautiful campus. I've actually been there. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. It's great. So it was fun. I, I, I tried out for basketball down there and didn't, didn't quite make the team. And then I ended up picking up lacrosse, which is now spreading across the U S but at the time I, I was not exposed to lacrosse growing up. So it was, uh. it was kind of fun to play a club sport and learn it, uh, kind of soup to nuts uh I, I didn't know anything about it when i got there and ended up being a pretty big fan of the game after i left cool i'll bet that was a tough basketball team to make it was st mary's i mean they're, they're everyone, a powerhouse everyone hears every about year. gonzaga but yeah we, we beat gonzaga last year in the tournament to yeah. win the wcc and and you don't hear about it a lot because we always have to play gonzaga but uh yeah they're <laughs> they're a, they're a good uh good team and they've been good for a long time yeah that's right and i saw i think it was on your linkedin profile you did a semester at sea what was that like Oh, that was amazing. I'll it was bet. probably the best thing I've ever done in my life. Really? Um, wow. Yeah. And so we were on a ship. I was actually through the semester at sea. I think it still may be, but it was through the University of Pittsburgh. Uh -huh. And I heard about it from a friend, applied and got in. And um, we basically were on a ship for uh, one semester where we'd take classes on the ship for four to five days. And then we'd land in a port um, and go, you know, basically do some side trips and learn about the culture and, and kind of, it was kind of almost like social studies. It was pretty, it was pretty wow. neat that we, we started in the Bahamas and ended up in Seattle. So we went oh, full, man. all the way around the, all the globe. It was pretty neat. You went around the horn or you went through the, the uh, we, we uh, were, canal? We, we went around the horn. Wow. So we, yeah. So we, we started at Bahamas. We went to Venezuela, Brazil, South Africa, Kenya, and then we went kind of up the, Went to India and uh, Philippines, uh, Vietnam, uh, Japan, and then ended oh, in Seattle. Yeah, what a great experience! Yeah, that must have been fabulous. Yeah. You saw some great. It was great. Spots. It was pretty. Yeah, it was pretty amazing, especially to do it with your peers. Like to have you mm -hmm. know three hundred, you know, kids your same age from all over the country. It, it was pretty neat because St. Mary's. Uh, I love the school, but it's twenty eight hundred undergrad, so it's a yeah. pretty small <laughs> school, and I, I was kind of ready to to spread my wings and, you know, meet some more people. And that was, it was a really good opportunity. It was a lot of fun. Right. So you're pretty involved at Corkers. How often do you get to fish? <laughs> Not, <laughs> Not as much enough. as I'd like. Not yeah. often enough, right? <laughs> That's what everyone always says. Oh, you're so lucky to be in the outdoor business <laughs> and this and that. But you, you kind of find yourself doing less and less. Although I will say we do some fun trips with the company. We take the employees out and we bring some media people out and, and uh, you know, retailers out and stuff from time mm -hmm. to time. So that's kind of fun because I, schedule those in advance and those are the ones that i end up not flaking out of so uh <laughs> it keeps me uh it keeps me um involved uh but I, I don't get out as much as i'd like to but i also uh in the last five years i've had three kids so uh that, that's <laughs> that, that's probably a bigger reason um that i haven't been out as much as I, i'd like to but actually my wife and i and some friends just bought a house on the deschutes river oh, uh man. here in oregon and so um, we're gonna go out there this weekend for the first time cool and spend the night out there but uh i'm hoping that gets me out on the water a lot more yeah very cool what type of fishing do you love to do most um i like trout fishing you mm -hmm. know there's uh the northwest has got a lot of good fishing opportunities um I just because I think growing up with my dad, you know, doing a lot of the smaller rivers in Montana and Idaho, I, that, that's kind of what I like. So mm -hmm. the uh, the trout fishing on the Deschutes can be pretty good. There's also steelhead, which are uh, uh, for anyone that's tried, they're they're pretty hard to catch. So yeah. um, it's it's fun, but it's also can be somewhat miserable when you're in the rain, and <laughs> yeah. cold, and you you don't you go all day, you don't catch a fish. But that's steelheading for you. So um, what part of the Deschutes so, are you guys going to be on? Or the house, uh, right? Yeah, it's right above the Warm Springs okay, Pudding, so cool. the Warm Springs Indian Reservation. There's a pretty popular launch point there because the water is not super technical in terms yep. of rowing. Yeah, and so that's the one I do because there's below Trout Creek. There's some pretty gnarly rapids, rapids that yeah. I I've never felt comfortable uh, rowing my drift boat through. So mm -hmm. the house is right above the Warm Springs Pudding and uh, kind of on some of the water that I'm familiar with. Cool. I fished with those guys that have that shop there in Warm Springs. I'm blanking on their name. But uh, there's some great fishing right there. The red size is out of there, on, you know, on the uh, salmon fly hatch. It's a blast. Yeah, that's a uh, that's so that's when we usually bring some people out, uh, customers and media and stuff like that. It's always it's always fun just because the fishing is really hot for two to three weeks, and you're throwing these big 
big bugs, big bugs uh, right. and the fish kind of just come out of nowhere and smash them and it's it's a lot of fun yeah they come up from the deep and nail them it's so yeah. cool yeah pretty fun <laughs> when they get keyed in on them it's like they, uh, all the guides say it's like a, it's like a cheeseburger floating down the water you know <laughs> they, they see those and they they can't hold back that's right yeah so tell us about some of the challenges you've run into as ceo at corkers well, you know, from, from my perspective, I kind of came into the, I guess, you know, we're, we're kind of, I, we call ourselves a footwear company, but we're kind of making half footwear, half equipment, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I didn't have any real formal training in the in the business. So oh, okay. uh, challenges wise, um, I've pretty much run into all of them. Um, <laughs> you had to learn on the fly. That was challenge number exactly. one. Wow, that's huge. Yeah. yeah. And the, it, probably the biggest challenge and the stuff that I had to learn was, you know, kind of dealing with Asia because we make a lot of our mm. products overseas. Yep. So that whole supply chain, understanding like how to manage timelines and projects and things of that nature was uh, something that I hadn't had an experience with. So learning that whole side of the business was um, probably one of the first challenges and something that really needed to happen for Corkers. And that was one of the reasons the old owner got out of it. He just mm. was having a hard time with supply chain issues and, yeah, yeah. and things of that nature. So that was a, a real big challenge. And I've got some funny stories about being in <laughs> factories and really not having any idea what I was doing, but uh, we, <laughs> had, we ended up making it through and it, it turned out okay. So yeah, cool. Which, uh, which countries were you working in over there? Um, we do a little bit of business in, um, in, uh, Taiwan and a little okay. bit in Viet- Vietnam, but most mm. of our business is, is in China. So, gotcha. uh, yeah, so that, that's where I've been the most and spent the most time. I love going to Vietnam, going to Saigon. The food in Vietnam is so great. Oh man. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I learned that from semester at sea. It was one of my, oh, right. it, was inter- it was interesting because I, I thought there'd be because of the war and, you know, relationships in the past with the Vietnamese and the Americans that they wouldn't be very friendly people. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't mm-hmm. really on the top of my list. And, it actually ended up being one of my favorite countries that we visited. Yeah, great country. I agree. Yeah, and, the, and the people are great. The food yeah. is great. Yeah, it's it's a really neat place. Yeah, it's fun. How about the most rewarding part of that role? What's been the most, giving you the most positive feedback, the most fun? You know, maybe? Yeah, I mean, um, being around the outdoor industry is fun just generally. Um, I think a lot of people like look at it and want to be a part of it. Um, but I think the most rewarding is just to see the growth that we've had and um, you know, we, when I started at Corkers, it was about $300,000 in revenue. So it was oh, a wow, really tiny. small company. Yeah. yeah. And we're looking at a little under seven this year. So Good 7 million. You. So Good for you. yeah, it's been fun to see it grow and, you know, be a part of it. And it's been a lot of hard work, but, uh, <laughs> starting to feel like, you know, we're, we're, we're getting to the places that we want to get to. So that's good. And has most of that growth come from fishing or does it come from some of those other outdoor products that you guys do? Um, it's, it's traditionally been mostly fishing. So we do about 4 million in fishing. So that's, Uh uh, still the majority of the market for us. Um, but we're also growing the outdoor side of our business with winter boots and ice cleats and other products that we feel, probably has more of a growth opportunity for the company um, because they're just bigger markets. Um, So that's where we're seeing a lot of our growth and that's where we're, you know, we're, we're still looking at growing the fishing business, but uh, we're, we're one of the, in the premium wading boot space, we are uh, probably number two and not Mm -hmm. too far behind the market leader. So we are uh, got quite a bit of market share there. Yeah. That's awesome. Good. Yeah. Um, Let's shift gears a little bit. What outdoor activities do you participate in other outdoor activities? So I obviously fish, I do a little bit of hunting Uh, again, not as much as I'd like to, but, Mm -hmm. uh, do, uh, hiking, camping, skiing. Um, you know, I, I just like to be outside. So, uh, you know, if, if it's, uh, I mean, I also like the travel aspects and I think that's one thing that I like about fishing and fly fishing too, is just going out, going to see new places. I just Mm -hmm. was on the Missouri river a couple of weeks ago and that was, uh, in montana really oh, cool, really neat yeah. river to see and so yeah i just i, I just jo- enjoy being outside and seeing new new places have you fished in asia yet i've never I fished over. yeah i haven't either <laughs> i have no idea what that's like <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny working with you know chinese factories and things like that because they, they really have no idea what our like our wading <laughs> boot products are even used for like they just don't really get it so i try to bring posters and pictures and oh, cool. you know to give them an idea of what you know what we're using them for and show them videos and stuff like that so they it's it's interesting to see their reactions but they've really never seen anything like what, yes. what we do over here in terms of wading in rivers and and uh using the, the equipment that we use right pretty crazy um do you have any suggestions or advice for someone wanting to get into the outdoor business well, you know, I actually have a lot of people that, you know, kind of knock on my door and they're mm-hmm. usually wanting to get into the outdoor business because they think it, you know, they're an outdoors person and right. they think it sounds fun, which it is. Um, 
So I guess my advice, a lot of times uh, what I've told people is that it's hard to kind of get into the industry when you're, when you don't have any experience and, yeah. um, you know, a lot of brands are looking to hire people that have been in the business for several years or whatever else. So I think, I guess my biggest piece of advice would be to like s- s- knock on the doors of some of the smaller companies mm-hmm. uh, like a Corker's mm-hmm. where you might be able to, rather than just do one singular job task or role, you, you might be able to wear several hats and learn more mm-hmm. about the business. So we've had several people at Corkers that have started there in one capacity and then kind of uh, graduated into another. And I think it's because they're exposed to all parts of the business product, um, sales, marketing, um, operations, right. all of that stuff. So uh, I think that's my, that would be my advice. Yeah, that's good advice. Do you guys have a, a mentorship or apprentice type program or just, they just, because you're so small, like, I've worked at small companies in the same thing. You just get exposed to everything, which is great. Yeah. Uh, we don't really have an official one. I mean, yeah. we've, what, what I kind of like to do is I, if I find a candidate that I think is, you know, has the right attitude and, mm-hmm. you know, we kind of look for people that are just go getters are going to be able to get stuff done without a ton of direction. Cause we don't have like a lot of layers of management right. and things of that, right. like that at the company. So I, I just kind of look for people that have the right attitude and the right work ethic. And then, um, you know, even if they're applying for a job, uh, and we don't have one, a lot of times I've called those people back a few months later and, mm-hmm. and hired them when we, when we had an opportunity, cause I liked their, you know, their attitude and the work ethic. Right. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. Do you have any daily routines you use to keep your sanity? Meditate, walk the dog, <laughs> kick the dog with three kids. You probably, that keeps you busy, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For a while. So we have, a our oldest is five and we have twins that are four. Oh, so, wow. Um, Man, you are running the while, gunning. Holy cow. Yeah. For a while there, uh, any, any moment of sleep was, uh, very precious. So, you know that, but, um, uh, I, and unfortunately kind of f- fallen off the exercise. So I'm trying to get back into more of a routine of daily exercise, weekly exercise. Yeah, and, yeah. uh, I'm actually headed to, headed to play basketball after this. Oh, so, cool. Uh, nice. Good. Good for <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah. Those, that's a, those kids are young. They'll keep you busy. I'll bet. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> do you have any favorite, uh, podcasts or books or do you give books as gifts very often? You know, uh, I'm just kind of getting into the podcast thing. Uh-huh. Um, I, the last one that I listened to, uh, was, was called gladiator. It was about the, uh, Alex Hernandez, the New England Patriots wider oh, or, yeah. uh, tight end. It was pretty interesting. Um, so yeah. I finished that, I think it was 12 episodes or something like that. Um, huh. and then a book wise, uh, one of my favorite books and my favorite stories and part of why I was inspired to get into this business is shoe dog. Uh, it's the Phil Knight mm. story and the story behind Nike. Um, which again, as growing up in Portland, Oregon with Nike, basically in our backyard here, uh, you know, we've kind of seen the company grow from, you know, a small, small company into a, a global powerhouse Amazing. in the yeah. athletic world. Yeah. So it's yeah. pretty neat. And, um, I'm lucky enough to have a lot of friends that work there or oh, have cool. worked there. My father-in-law actually was, uh, there his whole career in finance and so it's mm. just fun to hear all these stories and you know kind of uh listen to how they got stuff done back then because it's in some ways similar like phil knight didn't really have any formal training or anything like right, that he just right. started selling shoes out of his car and right. uh, away they went so that was a great book and the great i mean you look at nike today and you read that book and you just have no idea i mean i even grew up in that area era and you just didn't know. All of a sudden, they splashed on the scene, and it, the impression everybody got was they were huge from the get go. But some of the stories yeah. he tells is how he started that thing and his trips to Asia. Man, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I've heard some stories about the early days, you know, to Asia because they were kind of one of the pioneers that started right. making products over there. And so yeah. it was. Uh, I mean, it's you know, it's somewhat adventurous still, but uh, back then, you know, they didn't have like the infrastructure, the hotels and stuff <laughs> right. that they do now. So it was right. a really wild west back then. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. How about your favorite outdoor gear purchase under a hundred dollars? Here's your chance for a shameless Ooh. plug. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, the Corkers, uh, new ice cleats with a BOA system are pretty nice. Cool. Uh, All right. I, good. I, 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 I take a look at those, but, uh, yeah, I also, uh, the jet boil has been one of my favorite mm-hmm. uh, purchases as well. Cool. I use it on the river, uh, camping and uh it's always nice to like cook a hot meal when you're it's raining or really cold outside so that's another one that i like good well we'll link to both of those in the show notes and we'll put a link to the corker's website too so people can go shop on there great uh is there anything else you'd like to say or ask of our listeners as we wrap up here no i mean for for people that aren't familiar with corkers you know take a look at our website it's uh k-o-r-k-e-r-s corkers with a k 
Um, we make some pretty innovative products uh, for outdoor use, fishing, uh, winter, work, uh, all sorts of stuff, anything that you do outside. So take a look and let us know what you think. Um, and I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, cool. Where can people reach out with you if they have some questions? Follow up on well, LinkedIn or what's the best way? Yeah, uh, there's a number of ways, but uh, my email is Brian, B-R-I-N, at corkers.com. So you can send me an email. Um, you can also go to our website, contact us. Um, and uh, if you want me specifically, you could address me and it'll get to me or mm. just send in a general question and we'll have someone at customer service get back to you. Cool. Perfect. We'll put a link to all that stuff in the show notes. Well, it's been great catching up with you, Brian. Good to see you last hey. week at the show, too. That was great. Yeah, I really appreciate it. This has been fun and uh, looking forward to, to hearing it on the broadcast. Yeah, cool. And I'll come up and see you guys and get a little tour one of these days. Yeah, we'll maybe get out and do some fishing. That'd be too. great, right? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Let's plan on that. Cool. All right. Thanks all a lot. Right. All right, Rick. Thanks so much. Yep. Bye bye. If you want more of the Outdoor Biz podcast, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Be sure to go to the Outdoor Biz Podcast.com where you find all the episodes, show notes, and much, much more. Until next time, be sure to make time to get outside.